right, guys. In today's video, we are going to go over giving this basically a little paint job. Um, we're going to go over everything. And what brought this up was somebody on Reddit asked um, where they could get a good Cerakote job done. And uh, I jokingly said, why Cerakote it? That's expensive. Just get yourself some uh, spray paint. And they're like, well, I don't want to screw it up. And I, I, I get that. I mean, it's it's a little um, nervous, nerve-wracking, I should say, um, to rattle can your gun, I, I guess. Um, mine's black with some tan accents on it. But we're just going to do the whole thing today. I mean, you can't really screw it up, you know. And if you do, it, it's only paint. It wears off eventually. So, uh all you're trying to do is break up the lines uh, to basically give it some sort of camouflage. Now, obviously you're gonna paint it for the environment you're in. Uh, as you can see by the background, we're in my backyard. I'm in New England. Uh, it's a lot of green uh, fall right now, so there's multiple colors. Um, we're just gonna do tan. Why? Because I like tan and it's like what I had in the, in the Navy. So that's what we're gonna do. First and foremost, you're gonna need some supplies besides your gun. Uh, probably a nice sturdy piece of cardboard or a box or something that you can spray paint it on unless you just want to drop it on the ground and spray paint it on that. Um, but some other things you're going to need, which I have with me, um, obviously your paint. So for me, we're going to be using good old Home Depot Rust-Oleum camouflage. Uh, this is the tan one. And then we're going to be doing some accents and flat dark earth. So if you want to do olive drab, things like that, they have a, a multitude of colors. Uh, you're going to need some tools because you have to remove a lot of the uh, crap that's on the gun, right? So like your pack, um, you don't want to remove your, your brace, things like that. So you need tools, which aren't super exciting there. Uh, it's just some random screwdrivers I had in my basement. Uh, you need a pair of scissors. Obviously, masking tape for things that you're not removing. Um, and to create the cool, awesome, tactical pattern, uh, you just go get some laundry bags. These literally are from uh, the dollar store. Okay. Uh, got two different types mesh bags. This one is really, really small. And then this one has really big ones. We're probably going to be used the big ones. But to each their own. Uh, the scissors are basically for cutting that up because I don't want weird cross patterns. That's just me. I'd rather just cut it apart and lay it open. And uh, you just kind of kiss it with a darker color. It, it's, it's pretty simple. You do what you want, right? It's, it's not like it's rocket surgery. So there's really no way to screw this up. And the other thing I would recommend is uh, just a small little magazine. Uh, this is going to go up in the magwell just to protect it. All right. So... First and foremost, you got to remove all of your different furniture. You don't want to basically cover with paint. So flashlights, things like that. Um, you're definitely going to want to tape up your muzzle brake. Uh, if it takes uh, a suppressor, like this Atlantic Dragon uh, takes a suppressor. So if you nail this with paint, your suppressor is not going to marry up properly. Um, I'm not worried about the barrel or anything. So the handguard obviously is going to get covered in paint. Um, you can take the BCG out if you so choose. Uh, for me, I'm probably going to take the bolt carrier group out. I'm going to leave the handle in there, but I'll probably shove some rags up in there. You're definitely going to want to have that dust cover closed. When it comes to your optic, you can take the optic off, but then it's going to really screw the zero up. You're going to have to re-zero everything. Me, I'm probably just going to uh, tape off the face and the back and then just piss can everything else. One thing you definitely want to do though is anywhere where you have uh, controls like that, so it tells you which way right is when you are zeroing it, you're going to want to tape that off so you can still see it after you've painted it. If you paint over it, you're not going to know which way right is, which way is left, things like that. Um, when it comes to iron sights, I like to flick it up, just tape it off. Paint it, and you'll be fine. Again, cover anything you don't want painted with tape. So, obviously, the controls for 
which way is right, which way is up, so on and so forth. I mean, they're iron sights. It's pretty simple. So, all right, let's get to, uh, let's get to taping and removing all the equipment. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, uh, tape off the trigger, uh, board assist, pistol grip, vertical grip, definitely muzzle device, the iron sights, um, the little knob that tells you whether it goes right or left, taped off the glass area, um, since it's a sight mark, the emitter, which is in the back here. Uh, on the other side, which we'll turn this way, um, all the markings for serial number, uh, things of that nature, caliber, um, manufacturer, and depending on the type of gun you have, if you SBR'd it, you definitely need all this legible. This is an SBR, so I need all of that clear and legible, so it won't be painted. Uh, any little power knobs, things like that. Uh, when it comes to the BCG, I just left it in there uh, to protect the star chamber, but I did shove a bunch of tape in there and then close the dust cover to keep it from getting painted. Um, I removed the little cheapy flashlight, which I will spray paint on its own, uh, but this way the mount is covered. It works, it illuminates. You can spend a ton of money on a flashlight or you just buy something that, that works. And a flashlight's a flashlight. Um, now, if you're operating, you're definitely gonna want buy once, cry once type of flashlight. Get yourself a, a good surefire or something like that. So the magazine, which is empty, uh, and I hate these tiny little magazines because you lose them in your in your pocket, in your pouches. Uh, just insert that just to protect the mag well. You don't want anything getting up in there paint-wise. It, it possibly could foul everything out, so on and so forth. All right, all the markings like for M-Lock, well, I don't care about any of that. Um, this is a QD mount. It's going to be fine the way it is. QD mount in the back. Mm, well, I'm not really going to need that, but if I didn't want paint up in there, I would definitely be uh, covering that up just so I don't have any problems. But I should not be getting back here too far, just here. Now, for me, I don't want full coverage. I'm just going to break up the lines, so I'm just going to give a quick pass over it. So you're going to see some of the black through it still, the tan, so on and so forth, and then we're going to do the little netting thing on it. Uh, right now, I'm just going to start shaking because you got to mix the paint up. This is the boring part. As I said, this is the boring part, just sitting here shaking it. Neighbors come outside, look at you like, what are you doing? I'm shaking my paint can. And if you're doing this in your backyard and your neighbors are, you know, well, not like you, not like-minded, uh, be aware they might freak out that you're sitting there with a gun. Uh, my neighborhood, the surrounding people around me, they're basically clones of me. They don't care. If anything, they'd come over and want to take a look at what I'm doing. So I'm not too worried. But remember, you're on your own property. Do what you want. All right, so I've been mixing this for a little bit, a couple of shakes here and there. All right, so moment of truth. Um, I am not getting all that close trying to spray up into things. I'm going to keep it back and just kind of missed it. So that being said, do it outside and uh, don't be wearing clothes that, you know, your Sunday best, so on and so forth. All right. So that's one side. I would let it dry and then flip it. 
All right, so we're going to let this dry for a sec, and then we're going to flip it over. All right, so it's been sitting here for a few minutes. Obviously, it's going to be dependent on your temperature outside. I mean, here it's high 50s, low 60s, so it is tacky still, but close enough. So all you got to do is flip it. And then we're going to hit up the other side. Now we let this dry and we'll come back and we'll do netting. All right, so this is pretty good. Lines are sort of broken up and uh, now we're gonna move on to the mesh. And I know what you're asking. While I'm sitting here waiting for it to dry, what am I doing? Well, besides shaking the paint, uh, I'm enjoying uh, some Hell's Lager. This is from Epicure Brewery. It's local here in Connecticut. This was uh, Brewed up specifically for the Irreverent Warrior Silky Hike. So nothing like uh, on a Saturday sitting there drinking a Hollenbringer and painting your gun. Just so you know. All right, so let's get going on the mesh. We are going to use the bigger mesh. All right, so we're going to open it up. All right, so it's... There's a bunch of them in here. You only need one. So you can see how it's two. Um, you don't need to have it doubled up. I mean, you can leave it if you want, but like, I don't need this zipper and everything in the way. So I am probably just going to cut this open and fan it out. So they're a dollar. I'm not really uber, uber worried about it. All right, so here we go, cut that. Now, if you've got old ditty bag from boot camp, which I do, I have no idea where it is. So we went to the dollar store. And the nice thing is, oh, there, you can pick up some rippets. If you know, you know. Cut through the zipper. I'm trying to do this without obviously cutting myself. And then you gotta cut up the bottom. Just so we can spread it. Oh, you can hear trucks driving by. It's a junk truck. Searching the neighborhood for bulk trash that's going out. So with this, literally all you got to do is this, spread it out. So when I paint it, I am probably going to avoid this area. All right, and it's not to just spray the whole thing. It's just to kind of kiss it here, kiss it there, uh, going on an angle, vertical, opposite angle. You're just trying to break up the lines, all right? I've got to go find... The damn paint. I lost it. I don't know where I left it. All right, let me go find it. All right, I found it. I had left it near the uh, front door when I went out to check the mail. There you go. Now you hear the sirens. That is not for me. At least I hope it's not. I'm kidding. It's not for me. They went past my street. All right, so now just kiss it. Now 
not having it the exact desired effect. So, I'm gonna bring it a little closer. There we go. It's just breaking up the lines. So yeah, you can see it's splattered, little dots here and there. It's fine for what I'm trying to accomplish. Again, just kind of breaking up that pattern. Oh, it is breaking up the pattern. I'm just give a quick flip. the pattern up a little. All right, it's not supposed to look pretty. All right. Now, uh, there's some paint missing. Look, it's all going to be chipped off in the end. It's going to wear out. That's kind of the point. All right. Now, if you want to add some of the little ones, you can. I'm happy with the bigger one. Not a big deal. And literally, I'm done. That's it. All right, I'm gonna let it dry up and uh, we'll uh, go from there. All right, so touched it up a little bit here and there. And then of course, over there, painted the flashlight. All right, so as it's drying, I'm moving it around. One thing that's gonna happen, you can see your hands are gonna get covered in that misted paint that's all over the place. Um, if you don't want that to happen, wear gloves, all right? And you can see as I'm already, as I'm banging it around and stuff, paint is just kind of chipping off. Hey, that's aesthetic. I know people that literally pay to have a battle-worn uh, Cerakote done. Why do that? Just rattle can the gun and then train with the gun, bang the gun around, and you know what? You get the same effect, and it only costs you like 10 bucks. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to let this cure for a little more and throw everything back on. It's a good opportunity to kind of redo some cable work for cable management. And uh, you just want to make sure your switches and everything are moving, um, which is fine. All right. So it's a good opportunity to all those buttons are working. I don't want to do this one just yet because it's going to pop that open. Do that in here in a few. Um, you got something special for here. So we'll give another 10 minutes or so, and then we'll uh, we'll start unwrapping her. All right, so I opted to go in and wash my hands, and now I'm going to use wet gloves. Um, as you touch this, it's going to feel grainy. Um, the paint is going to wear off over time, obviously, but in the beginning, all that fresh paint is going to get all over everything. So if you don't want to jack up your, your clothes and your gloves and things like that, what you can do is get a, just get a rough rag, right? And just give it a quick wipe. See how it's all coming off there? So all that extra powder, I don't want it getting all over all my gloves and everything else so basically you're wiping off the dust all right the paint stays behind what needs to be there all right so you can see all that dark paint that was just kind of misted on it's coming right off. All right. Yeah, I know in the comment section you're going to be picking on my poor little lamp. 
light from Amazon. But you know what? It works. It illuminates. It's got a rechargeable battery. Yeah, it's not what you'd see on a normal gun tubers channel where they're buying those surefires and streamlights or god forbid some of them are o lights and listen yeah it's cheap okay it does its job i just need it to make the darkness not dark so there you go and it's full of carbon but it works i haven't charged this battery in probably i don't know six months so it does its job not everybody's flush with cash Right, you watch some of these YouTubers that are sponsored. You know who sponsors me? Me. So. All right, so now let's start pulling off some of the tape. Some areas might have a little overspray. Scrub that off with a mini greenie. Not a big deal. All right. She's all unwrapped. I'm happy with it. Again, you want to make sure all your things are working. All right. Make sure the glass was clear. There was no overspray in there. Same with the emitter. That locks open. That's good. That closes back in and out. So, all that seems operable. All right. Board assist is good. Nothing went up inside. So, now it's time to throw all the stuff back on it. All right. Lights back on. Pecs back on. Routed the cable. Use some Ranger bands. Um, Electrical tape, can't beat electrical tape. Electrical tape's always great. And of course, the upgrade, let me just move you into position. The upgrade we're talking about is gonna be this. There you go. Time to put the sling back on and everything is pretty much good to go. Now just to take it to the range and Shoot the crap out of it, like I normally do. So, let me know, guys, if you like this. Uh, we can do it to the uh, DLD, because this is the Nagatuck. So, we can do it to the DLD. Maybe something different. Let me know what you guys think. All right, so the point of the video, I mean, it's not hard to paint a gun. Don't be afraid to paint your gun. If you want to change it up, you don't have to spend the money on Cerakoting it. Just... Spray paint the gun. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's not hard. All right, that's all I have for you guys. I'm going to go uh, get my ass inside before it starts pouring down rain. Best way to support the channel, buy the merch. Um, hit up the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I screwed it all up or whatever. All right, I don't care. I'm always in the comments talking to you guys. I will talk to you guys later. I'll see you in the next video.